So if we'll first state this for the DTFT case and then we'll give the formula for the Z transform case and the Z transform case the formula that is given will be understood only when you have the inversion integral. So, if you have y of n to be uh, having uh, d t of t y of omega and now I am using the x of omega and y of omega notation rather than x of e to the j omega and y of e to the j omega because in this case this is more convenient. Then x of n times y of n this has d t f t d theta. And this is also notationally written like this. If you look at the expression for the uh, what is there in the integral, this reminds you of convolution. The only difference is the limits are not from minus infinity to plus infinity, but they are between minus pi and pi. And uh, this is nothing but x of omega convolved with y of omega except that this is not your usual convolution. The usual convolution is called as linear convolution and this is what is called circular or periodic convolution and that is denoted by an asterisk within a circle. So, this denotes circular convolution. Uh, was the notion of circular convolution introduced in uh, signals and systems? Okay. So, this is an important counterpart. Uh, we will look at more about this uh, later. And we will point out the fact that when you have two signals that are periodic, uh, linear convolution does not make sense, but convolution is still an important attribute in those cases and the convolution that makes sense when two functions are periodic is circular convolution. And notice that here uh, x of omega is the d t f t therefore, this is 2 pi periodic, y of omega is also d t f t it is also 2 pi periodic. And when you have two functions uh, that are periodic with the same period, this is the kind of convolution that you can realize using uh, periodic signals. And we will also see the counterpart for this. Here the independent variable is continuous, omega is a continuous variable. Therefore, uh, you have the convolution integral defined like this only that uh, the limits are between minus pi to pi. This can also be from 0 to 2 pi. So, this is circular convolution for functions whose independent variable is continuous. Later, we will also define a circular convolution for discrete time sequences that are periodic. There also we will introduce the notion of circular convolution, there it will involve summation. The summation will go from 0 to n minus 1, assuming the sequences are periodic with period cap n.
if you now multiply two sequences in the time domain, now we look at the corresponding property for the Z transform. And as I had mentioned earlier, you will understand this better once we introduce the notion of inversion integral. So, this is 1 by 2 pi j. This is the uh, contour integral over an appropriate contour 1 over 2 pi j contour integral of x of gamma times y of z by gamma d gamma by gamma. And what is missing here is you also need to specify the corresponding ROC. So, this is very uh, similar to what was happening in the continuous time case. There, if you had x of t times y of t, if you multiply in the time domain, you convolve in the frequency domain. There, you convolve the corresponding continuous time Fourier transforms. There, in general, the transform of each of these functions is aperiodic, and then when you Convolve in the frequency domain, the convolution is your regular convolution, linear convolution. Therefore, if you recall the continuous time case, so this was x of t times y of t, your ctft was 1 over 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity x of theta y of omega minus theta d theta and this was nothing but 1 over 2 pi x of omega convolved with y of omega and this is linear convolution. What about the corresponding property for the Laplace? This is complex convolution. BR stands for oh, okay. Uh, you guys have not had a course in uh, complex, correct? Okay. So, BR stands for. Bromwich integral, all right. So, uh, for those of you who want to know uh, more about this, this is an extremely good book. Yes, so this is by Wilbur Lee Page. So, this is one of the most accessible books on uh, complex variables in Laplace transform. Okay, so Lee Page, uh, electrical engineering professor. So, the treatment is fairly rigorous, but not too mathematical, it is very much understandable. So, there uh, he talks about things like 
uh, complex convolution and so on. There is also a, a chapter on Z transform in that book. So, this is an extremely accessible readable book uh, for those of you who are interested in knowing more about complex variables and uh, associated topics. Um, he also talks about uh, convergence of the Laplace besides absolute convergence. So, these are the kinds of things if you are interested it is uh, well worth looking this up. 